Now, back to the general election. Three political parties you won't have heard much from on air, but each of whom is fielding multiple candidates. We thought you should hear from them. William Clouston, leader of the Social Democrats, the SDP. Brendan Donnelly, leader of the Rejoin EU party. And first, Hos Chaffee, national campaign coordinator for the Workers' Party of Britain. He's a member of a small, relatively new party. It was launched by George Galloway. How does the Workers' Party manage a campaign when it's standing in just a quarter of constituencies? We only get the reach that we get through Twitter, Facebook and places like that. But social media does not reach into people's homes. I mean, there is a political group of people that have already decided what they're going to vote. Those people, when they receive my tweet, are not going to change their mind. It We've been rather Brenda. encouraged in the, the rejoining you party by the number of, of young people who are engaging with us on social media. And that corresponds to the demographic of younger people who, on the whole, are more likely to want to rejoin. William Cluson of the SDP, where do you sit in this view of social media? Is it useful? Is it an opportunity to change people's minds? Or is it kind of peripheral to the main campaign, which is still dominated by the newspapers and perhaps more importantly these days by television? I look at it the other way, really. I think we do a lot of work on political Twitter. We're very active there and we have been for a long time on Facebook and uh, our YouTube channel is well patronised. But... Really, the general election is an opportunity for us to go much further than that. And again, on the TV channels that I appear on reasonably regularly, which is GB News and Talk TV, the listeners and the viewers of those channels know us, really. So this has been a great opportunity for us to get further. And actually, I was very pleased to see the BBC turn up at the SDP's National Manifesto launch a couple of weeks ago in Leeds at the Working Men's Club. That took us to another dimension. But and, once and in five weeks, I just wonder if that feels to you like fair coverage. Well, I think we, we'd always want more. I think it's, I mean, I share the irritation of the other two guests on this piece. Hold Shafi. I just want to say my experience for my party has been the manifesto launch was the only time that the BBC, ITV, Sky and GB News came over and they all gave, well, GB News gave a live audience to George, like live, uh, call it what you will, it was like five minutes of trying to attack him. But other than that, we've not been on GB News. We've not been on talk. I was on Politics Live for four minutes and two seconds. And after four minutes and two seconds, I was basically asked to leave. And I did leave, because that's what happens when you're asked to leave. And uh, I just don't think but it's I, fair. Yeah. My picture is not so much not being coverage of the Rejoin EU party as they're not being coverage of the Rejoin EU issue. Mm. And that reflects the, in my view, rather limited bubble uh, in which the political class exists in co symbiosis, if you like, with its journalistic reflectors. It's disgraceful that when more than 50% of British opinion, apparently, consistently in opinion polls, wants to rejoin the European Union, that's not something which is being offered by any party seriously. Right, let's talk about issues. The first one is relations with Europe insofar as it affects things like the economy and also migration. Uh, Hosh Shafi? So I was going to push back a little yeah. bit, if I mm. can, with Brendan, than to do with Brexit and to do with where we are as a country mm. today. We are four years, five years away from when Brexit actually took place and we had a reconfirmation of the will of the people in 2019 Shouldn't in the stop. general election that Boris Johnson won with a massive majority. And my position as a Remainer is that I respect democracy. We have to give the opportunity for Brexit to whatever, whatever form it's going to take in the end to be allowed to become what it's going to become. If it does not work, and it's going to need more than four or five years for this because it could take 10 years, then we have to give the opportunity for those people who did vote for it and the difference now compared to what it was back then is you know it's irrelevant before i bring brendan in i, I just want to bring william in at that point what's the sdp yeah. position of this because um, europe was one of the issues on which the founders of the sdp broke with the lay party i know that's a long time ago and there's a lot of water flowed under a lot of bridges since then but are you still essentially a pro-european party we're a pro-european party but we're not a pro-eu party our position has tracked that of uh, lord owen actually you know we, we're a I strongly in favour of Brexit. I think uh, if you profess social democracy as political philosophy, you can't join a trade cartel which prevents the very thing that you profess to want to implement. I would ask people, if your state can't keep a steelworks open under the rules, 
then you're not living in a democracy. So I take a sort of Benite, Shawrite view on this. Good for you. <laughs> well, well, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, and I don't think most people in the rejoin EU party would either. What we'd say is that every time you have a general election, democracy is on the table again. People can change their minds, and it's up to them when they change their minds. I think it's wholly arbitrary to say you've got to wait for 10 or 20 or 30 years before you know whether Brexit has worked. Right, let's talk about one other issue that has had a lot of attention, and that's migration. Hos, from the point of view of the Workers' Party, it's clearly been a source of a lot of unease to people in traditional working-class jobs, the impact of migration. What's your party's position on that now? Anyone who's in the country right now is welcome to stay here. Anyone who's here and has basically got their paperwork sorted out, and even if they haven't got their paperwork sorted out and are here right now because they've got on a boat and whatever else, we draw a line and that's it. That's who's here. What we want to do is we don't want to have all of these boats coming over with all these people on it. And what we need to do is basically think about what are these people doing when they come here? If they actually contribute to our civil society, if they help build our country into a better place, then I'm happy for them to be here. Are they suppressing wages, in your view? A hundred percent. Because when you've got cheap labour here, and it means big business gets away with paying people not the right amount of money. William Clouston of the SDP. I largely agree with Mr Chaffee there. I think he's, he's broadly right. There's no doubt at all that mass immigration has been used over many, many years as a drug to plug short-term problems in a dysfunctional labour market in the UK. It's also uh, discouraged training. You know, when we were in the yes. single market and freedom of movement, there was no incentive for British employers or government to train anyone because you could rely on a massive pool of labour. But there's a further thing, which is culture. And people won't talk about the massive demographic social changes that have happened. Most British people agree with the SDP on this. We need to take a break, have a pause, probably a generational long pause to get to know each other. Brenda Donnelly of Rejoin I'm EU. All... I mean, you're very clear in your manifesto that the resumption of EU freedom of movement would swiftly alleviate the serious shortage of essential and able workers in uncongenial and low-paid sectors. That's absolutely right. In the present state of the British economy, we do need migration. Now, I'm not at all against um, better training and better wages and all sorts of things to do in order to improve the situation. But at the moment, we do need migration. And the migration model of freedom of movement was a much better one to this country than the present migration model, which may well lead to people staying indefinitely in this country and perfectly legitimately then calling on social security later in lives and the National Health Service. Also, I think we mustn't confuse the question of legal migration with potentially illegal migration. And then there's another question of people seeking uh, asylum. And those three are often run together. The obvious question to ask all of you is do you believe that we are moving away from a kind of two-party duopoly? So you know, I think there's no doubt at all the depth of the support for these establishment parties is very weak. I'll make a prediction here. I think by the end of the decade, people will be crying out for a change in the voting system to allow a new entrance into this rotten political system. Hos, Chaffee. 1997, we had Labour for 13 or 14 years. We've had Tories from 2010 to 2024. It's the same two parties doing exactly the same thing, and it's not helping people. The metric for me that upsets me more than anything else is that after we're in the 30-year highest levels of poverty in our country. The gap between the rich and the poor has never been as wide as it is, and I can't see any difference with Labour in charge or Tories because none of them have got policies that will help the poorest people in our society. That's what we've got to look at. For, for the Tom, reasons yeah. that have been put forward of fairness, we're in favour of proportional representation, but we're also in favour of proportional representation because we think it will make it easier for us to remain in the European Union once we get back. It won't be a question of the Conservatives getting in with 35% of the vote and joking us out of the European Union again. So we have another particular reason in favour of PR. Brendan Donnelly of Rejoin EU, the SDP's William Clouston and Hosh Shafi from the Workers' Party of Britain. I'm Sean Lay. That's The World Tonight. Good night and have a restful weekend.